You know, I'm genuinely jealous of Blizzard fans right now. They just wrapped up with their BlizzCon Lion 2021 event, which was to make up for the fact that they didn't have BlizzCon last year, uh, for obvious reasons. And from what I've seen in terms of reaction to reveals and the news that's come from that, a lot of people have walked away happy and very satisfied with everything that they've seen and learned. Now, I wouldn't call myself a Blizzard fan, really in any sense of the word. Not because I'm not into what they're selling. Only in recent years have actually played a Diablo game and I haven't actually even finished the two I've started being Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, but I never really got past the first hour of either game. Uh, Overwatch, I had never played past the beta because none of my friends actually had the game and I didn't want to play a team-based shooter on my own. World of Warcraft is something I didn't have the time, technology, or the money for considering that is a paid-for subscription and as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong on this because again I don't actually know much about World of Warcraft, is I'm fairly sure each expansion is quite pricey as well. Again, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, it is what it is. The only reason I talk about BlizzCon Line is because not too long ago, we had our first Nintendo Direct, our first real Nintendo Direct in well over a year. And myself, like many fans, were super excited to hear what Nintendo's gonna be announcing. And considering that the day I'm recording this right now, the 21st of February, 2021, the day of Zelda's 35th anniversary, myself and many other fans expected to be some kind of Breath of the Wild 2 news or some other exciting news in how they're planning on going about the 35th anniversary. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, it's something I will touch upon in a minute. And the reason I'm comparing BlizzCon Line to Nintendo Direct is because they're so dramatically opposed to each other. And by that I mean obviously a Nintendo Direct is like somewhere within an hour live stream where they announce a bunch of stuff rapidly, like rapid fire, game, 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 game. And BlizzCon Line, or BlizzCon in general, is usually set over a few days and your reveals, your trailers, your news comes in spurts over those few days. And the key difference here, which is completely subjective, is everything BlizzCon announced, revealed, showed off, or talked about were all things fans wanted. We had more Diablo 4 news, which made a lot of people happy. There was a class reveal um, for one of their new uh, classes, the Rogue. They had Diablo 2 resurrected, the remaster fans have been asking for for years now. They had more news on Overwatch 2, where they revealed some of the new character designs. They talked about some of the maps. They talked about how they're reworking characters and game mechanics for Overwatch 2. They announced some World of Warcraft stuff. They announced some new expansions, the Classic and Shadowlands, which has made a lot of World of Warcraft fans happy. There was behind the scenes footage on how games are progressing and how they're going about working new game mechanics into their existing games or upcoming games. There was interviews with staff and producers and developers, which everyone ate up. Everyone loved every second of BlizzCon 2021 from everything I've read online. I didn't personally watch it. I kept up with like some of the reveal trailers for it because it's still cool to see at the end of the day. But like I said, I'm not really a Blizzard fan in the traditional sense. I'm more of an outside perspective, just absorbing what fans have been eating up for decades. Now, if we compare that to the Nintendo Direct that happened on the 17th, fan reaction was a little bit more unimpressed. Uh, to say it didn't live up to the hype would be an understatement. The live chat that was going on on YouTube was unimpressed. Uh, Reddit threads were very unimpressed. And from what I was told for a friend of mine who watched it on Twitch, apparently Twitch was just absolutely roasting Nintendo for half of this. Where Blizzard fans had got news and updates on all the games they wanted to see and expected, Nintendo fans didn't really get that much that they were asking for. We got news that existing games are being ported to the Switch. We got news that there is an Animal Crossing Mario crossover. We got a announcement for a new Mario Golf. 
we got a load of indie games, which is to be expected. They started off with a new Smash character, someone I've never heard of because I've never played Xenoblade Chronicles. But like I said, fans for the majority were expecting some big news on very specific games, considering that Nintendo has had well over a year to sort their shit out and give us some really cool stuff. With this Direct being in such close proximity to the 35th anniversary of Zelda, a lot of fans watching were expecting some kind of news about this like I mentioned earlier. In fact, fans are probably expecting a few big reveals and updates considering that Nintendo have had well over a year now to sort out this huge official proper Direct. And to say there were some glaring omissions is, again, an understatement to say the least. We still haven't heard any news on Metroid Prime 4, despite the fact it's been two years since Nintendo announced that Retro would be taking over the project. We haven't seen anything else for Neo The World Ends With You, which was announced last year, which would have been cool considering as The World Ends With You got its start on the Nintendo DS. There was no news about the new Switch console everyone's been going on about, the Switch Pro, or what they're assuming will be called the Switch Pro. And I think most obvious, and the reason people were watching, was for Breath of the Wild 2. I'm sure a lot of you saw me and thought there might be news about the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild game. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to share right now. There was no Breath of the Wild 2 on the Nintendo Direct set days before Legend of Zelda anniversary. And like I said, I'm recording on the 21st. There has been no surprise updates from Nintendo. There's no rumors flying around about an upcoming 35th anniversary Direct. The best we got was Aonuma taking stage and saying, oh, I know you're expecting news, but we have no news. Bearing in mind, it has now almost been two years since they gave us that announcement trailer. And you could argue that the game has probably been in development since at least a year before that. Which means it's technically been, assuming that's the scenario going on, it's been three years since this game started development and all Nintendo can offer us is one trailer two years ago. And they can't even give us screenshots, they can't give us any updates on the game other than that it's progressing smoothly in development. We've been left in the dark for so long, which it's not unusual for this to happen, considering that when Breath of the Wild 1 was in development, we were slowly drip-fed information, but we were getting some, as little as it was, information about this game. They were doing gameplay things on the Wii U, which ultimately fell through with promises that were never fulfilled on that, but we were getting things. It's frustrating to say the least, because it really feels like they're doing the Zelda franchise dirty. Considering Ocarina of Time is still, according to Metacritic, rated as the best game of all time. Which, you know, would think that would mean something to them. This is a beloved series. It's arguably Nintendo's second most major IP. I mean, some people would probably argue something like Smash, which, fair enough. Again, it's probably subjective. I don't know. But, but I feel like a franchise like Zelda, which is one of Nintendo's core titles, is just being kind of pushed aside. It's it's weird. I mean, there are rumors going around that they are gonna have another Direct within the next couple of weeks where they are gonna announce the Switch Pro and then they're gonna show Breath of the Wild 2 on the Switch Pro, which makes sense. But at the same time, why couldn't they have give us like another minute long trailer or something like that just to kind of tide us over and then go for this huge reveal where they're gonna give us not only a trailer, but then like, 15 minutes of gameplay recorded on a Switch Pro to show you how amazing this new console is going to be, instead of just basically blue balling the fan base and acknowledging you're blue balling the fan base. All we got from this Zelda section is they're giving us a Skyward Sword HD port, which has kind of been guessed. It wasn't exactly a secret that eventually we'd be getting one. And then they gave us new Joy-Con controllers that are meant to look like the Master Sword and the Hylian Shield. Fucking mind-blowing stuff there, Nintendo. Jesus. And I know I'm late doing this like four days later, but I really kind of had to take the time to try and figure out what Nintendo's strategy was here by acknowledging the fact that they're just giving us nothing, only telling us that we'll get something later in the year, a very vague and broad term. Later in the year could be next week, next month, the end of the year, 
a lot of speculations going on that we're going to be getting Breath of the Wild 2 in 2021. And with how Nintendo in February of 2021 has basically shafted us, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think we might get a holiday release at the earliest, but then I think we might get like a quarter two release next year, 2022. And to be fair, this is all subjective. I'm sure loads of people were happy with what the Direct gave us. I'm sure a lot of people don't mind there was no Breath of the Wild news because they're just casual fans and really couldn't give a toss. But personally, I really feel like Nintendo didn't just drop the ball. They kicked it down the fucking street and it landed in the sewer Pennywise is in. Nintendo's a bit of a weird one. <laughs> it's always felt like they were just slightly out of touch with their fan base and their community with some really weird decisions in the past, but we never really minded much because they gave us great games. But recently, it feels like that gap is growing more and more with the amount of DMCAs they're issuing, the amount of fan games they're pulling out, copyright strikes that they're giving YouTubers. Um, I can't remember his name, but they got rid of that one YouTuber on their partner program because he wasn't popular enough, even though he has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I think Nintendo really kind of needs to like step back and reevaluate themselves, especially seeing as that we're in 2021 now. You know, we're going into the second decade of the 21st century, and it feels like they're still just cresting the early 2000s. But <laughs> again, it's all opinion, it's all subjective. I wasn't happy with the event, I wasn't happy with what we were given, I wasn't happy with what we weren't. Again, congratulations Blizzard fans, I'm glad at least someone has a good start to the year. <laughs> but yeah, if you think Nintendo did a shitty job, why not mention what you hated about it down below? If you thought Nintendo did a good job and I should get off their back, let me know down below. But, until next time, thank you for watching, and I will see you later.